Stephen A. is somewhere looking at his phone saying, what about my New York Knicks? Nothing. Just in that voice, right? Like something about like, like that, right? Because we haven't seen much movement from them. So Brian Windhorst, what is going on in the Big Apple? Yeah, the Knicks have been looking to take on players and offload money, and they just haven't been able to find anything yet. We still have about 15 minutes left. It could still happen. Uh, they were close to a deal, or at least had some traction on a deal with the Lakers yesterday. Mm. Um, that would have involved them getting some draft picks, uh, for setting out a couple of players, but the deal fell apart. Um, so, um, you know, they're still working. We'll see. But, you know, the Knicks just weren't able to, you know, their m big move was Cam Reddish, but he hasn't played there that much. And the young players that they were hoping were going to take a step in value this year, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, um, Mitchell Robinson, those players' value just hasn't increased and therefore, when they go out shopping on the market, they're not able to really upgrade. Well, and they set the bar so high last season with their play that got them all the way into the playoffs. And it was electric being in New York at that time. And Julius Randle, his play, won him most improved player. He was incredible watching him last season. So, Perk, when you're looking at him this season, what's the biggest difference between this year and last year? Well, last year he had the ball more in his hands. He was more of the facilitator, the point forward. Then all of a sudden you add Kimber Walker and Evan Fournier, and all of a sudden Tibbs start running sets, more sets than just letting Julius kind of be that point forward. Now he's playing really basically going back to the power forward position, and now he, he's it's, it's just he's not used to getting his same amount of shots, his touches and things to that nature. But here's what I want to say. Uh, Wendy, you brought up an interesting point for us, the young guys not having value. I, I have to blame the front office of the Knicks and Tom Thibodeau. In order to up their value, you got to let these young guys be great and give them minutes. Well, their, their, but, plan, their nope. plan is to increase the value of their young players. Right. And then trade them when right. the star says, I want to be a Nick. Right. That could still be their had, plan. No, no, no. I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. But in order for them to do that, they have to be on the floor. So when you have, when, when Tibbs is stuck in his ways and he's given. You know, when he's playing Evan Fournier 46 minutes, uh, he's playing uh, Kimball Walker 38 minutes. It's not that much room for quickly. It's not that much room for OB Toppin. And so when I'm looking at this Knicks team right now, from from a, a former player looking at the players, they look like they're grown, like they're over tips. And I'm not calling for his job. I'm saying that. Right now, it's just like they're tired of Tibbs. And this is what I was saying when he was hired. I love that he, he got the opportunity, but Tibbs have to go back to adjusting. It's a new day and age. It's new players. You have to put your pride aside because it looks like players are going fr are being frustrated with him. I don't know why Tibbs is not playing Cam Reddish. Look, out of Zion, uh, uh, R.J. Barrett, when they was at Duke, Cam Reddish was by far the most talented guy on that team. And you could ask any one of them. His talent is still there. So I don't understand that part of it either. The Reddish one, I, I, I can't explain. I don't really know what the point of trading Cam Reddish was if you're just not going to play him. But I would push back a little bit on the idea that their young players haven't increased their value. I think they haven't increased their value at maybe their trade value as much as the Knicks would have liked. But R.J. Barrett's had a really nice last uh, two months. Mitchell Robinson's they can't had a good really trade R.J. Barrett because R.J. Barrett's like their best that's their, But stuff. that's their centerpiece for us. I mean, if they want a big, big, ideally, big star. Ideally, R.J. was there and they add the piece. Well, you don't always get what you want. Quickly's been okay <laughs> off the bench. Toppin is like plus a million and every Knicks fan is clamoring for him to play more. So I think they've been okay, but that's the story of the Knicks season. I think this is one of the most disappointing teams in the NBA. I thought they were going to be better than this. I was wrong. And as far as today, like, they just don't have much to do. Nobody really wants the contracts that are out there. They don't want to give up picks to get off those contracts. And so here we are with 10 Wait, minutes to go. Not even nine. We're, co we're coming under nine minutes. I feel like it's New Year's nine. Eve and, and we're counting and, down. And so the Lakers still haven't done a damn thing. The Lakers, the Knicks, do you expect them to, Wendy, as we watch this clock tick down? You know, I just didn't get the sense that the Lakers, are their hearts are in it on this trade deadline. I mean, again, we'll see what's going on. We're a little delayed, but, and I kind of don't blame them. You know, the Lakers, I don't know if they were interested in taking on more money mm. because money is always an issue. Uh, they're in the tax, but how far they go. And I'm not sure a move that they could make with Taylor Horton Tucker would materially affect the outcome of this season. I think one thing that they were looking at, especially as you watched them last night, they got to shake something up. And so, Doing anything to just sort of reset the mood would help. 
and maybe that'll come in a lineup change involving Russell Westbrook. We'll see. I, uh, how Russell Westbrook ha approaches the next few games, not that he's going to be a Laker in nine minutes for another year, hmm. is going to be very interesting. I would pay a large sum of money to be in the room when Frank Vogel and the coaching staff says to Russ, you know what? Time for you to come off the bench and play 20 minutes a game. I would just, I would love to be in the meeting, but I am actually, look, we got eight minutes left or whatever. I'm shocked that the Lakers haven't done anything because I was at that Bucks game the other night when the Bucks just destroyed them. They lost to the Portland, whatever is left of the Portland Trailblazers right. last night. And after that Bucks game, LeBron all but said, as did other players, we're not very good and we got to do something and they haven't done anything. And I thought they would just like get, do something to get a guy, even if you just get, it doesn't have to be a sexy name, but Terrence Ross or someone that could just come Perimeter in around and around play 20 competent right. minutes for your team because they look like, I mean, they're sad to watch right now. Their offense is slow as molasses. Let's say they, they look got miserable. Terrence Ross. Just what? do something. This is okay. LeBron James it, prime. you gotta got to try it. something. Got it. Let's say they did Terrence Ross. Let's say it happens in seven minutes. And that changes their horizon how? I think that's the way they're looking at it. How does that change their horizon? I, they don't have a basket of assets. They need something, though. They need to do something. Like, are, are they just telling us that this season is a wash? Like, are they just giving up? Because no, cause right, cause right, their play is telling us that. Yeah, because their play is telling us that. But as of right now, the only thing the Lakers got to look forward to is LeBron James breaking Kareem's uh, score, all-time scoring record. That's the best thing that's going to happen for the Lakers this year. They can look forward to the All-Star break. <laughs> I, I guess I'm a little surprised at all the reporting, and I've heard the same thing, that they were hesitant to put that 2027 first-round pick in play, even for a guy like Eric Gordon, who's not the sexiest name, because, mm. again, like, you, you just signed LeBron James, who's 37 years it's, old. It's, you are 2027. Your, yeah. Rob Polinka might be gone. Hey, like, they're trying to win. Once, once they else. got LeBron on that extension, they extended LeBron, they don't – the pressure I, is different. Can I ask you a question, right? We, we, we've known Russ, and, and guys know that Russ is bullheaded. He's stubborn, right? And we're trying to figure out, can him and Frank Vogel work together, right? Because I'm – as of right now, I don't think Frank Vogel is going anywhere. I just don't understand at this point why not pull the trigger on the John Wall offer that was out there. I, I have to say, if they could make that deal without giving up a first-round pick, and maybe there were ways they could do that, I think that would have been something they should have If, if I'm them, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying Russ... THT and that pick for Wall and Eric Gordon. I'm at least pitching that to see if One, I can get two guys. Another construct that could have been discussed, depending on who you believe, is Christian Wood and John Wall hmm. for that package, which would have been interesting. Done. Let's go. Hey, I love like, this I'm back in. and forth between Wendy and Lodo. <laughs> you're like, all right, that's good. That's yeah, good enough. But yeah. you, you're saying, yeah, I'd make that. I'd make that deal. You'd pick up that phone call. I so, absolutely. I mean, would. I mean, there the season, you, go. you know, Perk, you know this. The season is very long. There is always time in seasons. There is time for yes, us yes, us to Wendy, find. But time in this segment. is ticking. <laughs> but time is ticking. So coming up, we count you right up to the trade.